Yo, Higassin here, and here we go. Here's my review of One Piece, Manga Chapter 962, coming straight off the back of recording my live reaction because I'm so far behind, because I went on holiday in York last weekend. So I'm catching up. I'm just going to go through this review, kind of more off the top of my head, a little bit more freestyle than I normally would. This was a really good chapter, a really good chapter for the lore of Odin and the formation of the Nine Red Scabbers. This was very much a kind of the diary of Odin. This is what kind of the format of most of this was, the narration of Odin's diary. And we were skipping through time a little bit, actually finding out how we met with a lot of the members of the Nine Red Scabbards and somebody else that we'll talk about in a little bit. It starts off though where we left off in the last chapter with Odin at Yasui's house and we start to see the bond between Odin and Yasui form and all, and the trust between them and also the distrust between Yasui and his manservant Orochi. We see here Orochi, he was a schemer from the start. He was trying to always kind of dig into Odin and find his way up I guess. We see here that during uh, Odin's stay at Yasui's he kind of wrecked the place but that is just how he lives and during that Orochi is like, oh, some of the money's some of the money's gone. And Yasui is like, nah, that can't be right. If Odin stole the money, he wouldn't do it sneakily. He just walks right in, take it, be like, I got your money, and walk off. And you see he starts to kind of distrust Orochi a little bit here. And that's all we really get so far with Orochi. Not much, don't find out anything about his devil fruit and stuff. I'm sure this will come later on, how he got linked to Kaido and stuff, which inevitably ended up with Orochi killing Yasui later on. The rest of this we go into the diary format and we find out how most of the Nine Red Scabbards met Odin. Obviously we found out how Kinemon and Denjiro met Odin last week. This week again they're confirming the fact that they love Odin. They want to follow Odin. They look up to him. The next people that we see are two brothers and then brothers are Akika Nojo and Izo. Izo the biggest surprise out of all of these. I mean a thumbnail on, a thumbnail on YouTube kind of spot it for me but I was coming to this quite late so I was suspecting that Izzo was going to be in this but I did not expect them to be brothers really good information there really good possible law situations later on I mean we find out at the end of this chapter that the rocks pirates broke up and they were starting to form their own crews one of course being Whitebeard and we know that Odin was on Whitebeard's crew so did Izzo go with Odin I mean where was Izzo in some of these uh, other flashbacks and stuff. Some very, very good information there. And also, you know, just the fact that they are that they are siblings. Could we see Izzo coming back? That would be amazing. Next, we get a character that we don't know too much about. That is Kandro. And we find out that back in the past, Kandro was an absolute psycho. He was cutting off the hair of the dead and the living and turning them into paintbrushes. I guess that's where his hobby for painting and stuff started don't know if he had his devil fruit back then I mean bit of a coincidence if he was a painter then he ate a fruit that let him be a painter but I guess we'll find out later on it doesn't look like Kinemon has his devil fruit at the moment from what we saw a few chapters ago with him having actually steal some people's clothing so maybe maybe even Odin found uh found this devil fruit and was like ah oh, Kanjiro would actually really like this I'll take it back when I return to one I'll take it back and I'll give that to Kanjiro maybe the same kind of similar with Kinemon, but yeah, we find out that he was nicking people's hair to make paintbrushes. Does make me question his big paintbrush that he carries around with him. Whose hair is that? Creepy, creepy Kanjiro. Next, we have Raizo. And again, we find out a lot more information about Raizo. We find out that he was one of the Onuwa Banshu. And that, he kind of fell for a Kanoichi. And then he got rejected and so he left. And he was just kind of this person living out in the woods. I wonder who that Kanoichi could be. Could it be the bewitching Shinobu? Hopefully later on we'll find out. I mean they both kind of have like big heads and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe at the end there could be a happy ending for, for Rizo. Assuming that she's not of course the traitor. Or if she is. How will Rizo actually react to that? And the last one we find out about in this chapter. Which is one that we already kind of know about. Is Ashura Doji. We don't actually properly see the fight here. But we see that. Uh, Odin actually went into Ashura Doji's complex into Kiri. Kiri which was basically just a completely lawless land. The like rules of the land are you go in there and if you want to leave you got to fight. It's either you stay there or you die. Odin walks in there. He's like I hate this. Let me let me reform you. He takes them all out. All of the others. All Kinemon and all that. They run after him. We find out that 
Odin did that all on his own. Took out everybody in Kiri, including Ashra Doji, on their own. We got a nice little thing at the end. When Odin has made it all peaceful, we see Ashra Doji looking out a window. He's like, this is the first time I've been in peace. And then <laughs> Odin just kicks him like, shut up. Don't be like soppy on me. We've still got more work to do or whatever. We, let's be free. That's a really nice thing. It shows how much actually Ashra Doji really does care about 1-0 and, and what they have achieved in 1-0 and probably why he is not necessarily going to be the traitor because of how much he cares and he's probably really really pains him to see how far it has regressed under Kaido's rule so that was some good stuff there lots of good character stuff it ends with a beach and on the beach we see Inarushi and Nekomamushi's little chibi bodies and a little another little chibi character poking him that per poking him that little <clears throat> And another little chibi character, Pokenum, and that little chibi character is Kawamatsu. We don't find out where Kawamatsu came from. It's made to look like he was already there on the beach. We see their boat kind of at the side. Maybe he was out in the water and pulled him in. We don't find any information about whether or not he actually came from out of Wano. Is he a fisherman? Is he actually a kappa? Don't get any of that here, but that's how it ends. So next week, hopefully, all of that information will be revealed and find out a lot more about Kawamatsu. I'm very, very hyped for that information no more really about denjiro this week but hopefully again that will come and we also in the final bit we find out again like i mentioned earlier on about the rocks pirates and how they are now broken up and forming their own crews i'm guessing at some point maybe whitebeard is going to turn up in wano and that is where odin and Izo go off with odin and uh, potentially as well some of the others uh, i think what was it you know rishi and neko mamushi went with Odin on the travels and was on Whitebeard's ship and on Roger's ship. Does make me wonder why Izzo decided to stay on Whitebeard's ship in the end. Again, that'll be interesting to see all that stuff coming up. Overall, it was a really nice chapter. Lots of good information. I would probably give it... I'd probably give it a purple tier, I'd say. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of the fight with Ashura Doji. And some of it did kind of skip a little bit through, but it's definitely given us a lot of questions to think about especially with Izzo, especially with Kawamatsu's origins, especially again with Orochi, what's his plan? How did Orochi rise up from manservant to Shogun? And of course, what on earth <laughs> is going on in Kanjiro's head? Absolute freak. Hey, so thanks for watching. What did you think? Let me know about it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, maybe give it a like and if you really liked it why not subscribe you can follow me on twitter instagram and twitch oh and here's a related video you might enjoy and something more fresh i've been higassin and i'll talk to you next time bye